one of the questions I have for you, Gay, is uh, it seems like for a lot of us, we can easily spot our number one personas, mm -hmm. right? The showman or the professor, whatever it is for mm -hmm. us. But how do we find those number two personas that might be lurking a little bit more in the shadows, harder to spot, more in our blind spot? Fasten your seatbelt because uh, <laughs> this is a useful piece of information that I had to learn the hard way. The easiest way to identify your number one, I mean your number two personas, is to notice what you get most defensive about when somebody accuses you of mm. it. Like for example, I used to work with juvenile delinquents. And so here would be the way a conversation with go, would go when they were in their rebel persona, which is why they got to me in the first place. I would say something like, you know, um, when you got to that open door of that car and you saw that the person was in the donut shop, your choice was to get in the car and drive off, even though it was not your car, right? Is that kind of the way you see it, what happened, why you're here? And they would say, well, they had insurance. <laughs> <laughs> So there would be a way of kind of getting defensive about the thing I was inviting them to own. You know, because if, you're, if the kid had been smart, he would have said, yeah, you know, I could have just had a chuckle about that and walked on by, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, instead I choose to get in the car and I overlook the fact that I don't know how to drive a car. And so I, I wrecked the car you know, right, so I made two right. bad choices right there in a right. row. But so you will always get defensive if there's some number two persona that you haven't mm -hmm. fully come into harmony with and haven't mm -hmm. kind of retired. And um, another great way, and this is even more fasten your seatbelt, um, <laughs> let's say you have in your life, I'll just use a hypothetical, let's say you have a mate or a partner or a, a, a marital companion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anybody like that in your I life? I do, yeah. Okay, good. And uh, so uh, <laughs> I happen to be looking at her. That's why I'm <laughs> right kind of uh, having fun with uh, Nate here with this. Okay. Now, let's say that in that relationship, it probably hasn't ever happened to you, but maybe in that relationship, you've had some kind of conflict or something like that mm -hmm. has come up from time to time. And she has, and you have gone and complained about certain aspects of her. That right? might have happened. That might have happened. Sure, maybe yeah. a couple yeah. times. Okay. Well, any, any anything less <laughs> than ten thousand is okay. You know, <laughs> right. uh, if you start getting between ten and twenty thousand, then you need to work. <laughs> um, okay. Well, here's the magic solution to that. Notice what it was you complained about, and realize that you require that as a requirement of one of your mm. personas. This is the moment where philosophers usually keel over in a dead face. So <laughs> right, congratulations, right. keep breathing through this right, moment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so let's say, let's just hypothetically say I have a complaint about my wife that she travels too much. Yes. Hypothetically. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I, that is a complaint that I have, and you're saying that I am somehow requiring her yes. to travel. Yes. That there's a part of me that actually um, is, is somehow committed to her traveling. Well, yes, and let me even go one step okay. further. There's some feeling that gets triggered mm -hmm. when she travels. That's where the real persona interlock is. Oh. Because let's say you feel abandoned. That was one that right. was big for me. Uh -huh. um, and so out of that, I require people to go away all the time. Right. See, out of an abandonment persona, the requirement of right. that is people have to go away. That's, right. And, and yeah. so maybe next time she goes on a trip, it doesn't have that meaning yeah. for you anymore. Well, and I can see why somebody wouldn't exactly want to spend time around somebody who feels abandoned and <laughs> sad and sulking. She can't wait to get out of town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need a break from this guy. <laughs>